And welcome back to the Diamond Lane. It's 4.30 here in Winnipeg. My name is Simon Rosnack, and this Saturday and Sunday, Virtuosi continues their 2017-18 concert series with a show titled Artists of Manitoba, Smiles on a Summer Night. As the crispness of winter air settles here in Winnipeg, be warmed by the sound of outstanding local talent in a diverse program featuring composers like Handel, Berlioz, Part, and Dvorak. To begin the show, violist and virtuosi young artist Alexander Moroz will perform, and he joins me here in the Classic 107 studio for your next installment of Birchwood Jaguar 107 Live. From the Classic 107 studios in downtown Winnipeg, 107 Live for Birchwood Jaguar, the art of performance. Live in the Classic 107 studio, you just heard Alexander Moroz. Oh, thanks so much for doing that, and thanks so much for popping by the studio. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm so looking forward to it. What, what did we just hear? A little bit of Bach? Um, that was the Allemand from the fourth cello suite by J.S. Bach. Uh, the interesting thing there to me is, you know, you mentioned it's the cello suite, and I'm going to talk mm -hmm. about your instrument a little bit more, but I'm curious, how did you get started on the viola? <laughs> well, it's a funny story. I mean... When I was very young, I played the violin, just like my mom. Mm. But the thing is, is I really didn't like it. I, <laughs> I had started, like, I don't know, when I was two or three, and I had played for a while, but I had always hated going up high. I just, I couldn't handle the screechy notes. Ah. Like, it wasn't like I was, you know, like I was having a hard time with it, but I just didn't like the sound of it up high. And so around the summer of when I was nine years old, I was at a summer camp and I just refused to play on the E string at all. I just, I wouldn't <laughs> do it. And so my mom said, well, you have to play an instrument, Sasha. You just can't just quit. And so she said, why not the viola? And I thought, you know, hmm, I, I've never heard of the viola. Mm -hmm. And so I guess the idea for me was, is that it was unique and I liked being different than most people. So I gave it a try and it just stuck. <laughs> no kidding. I'm so thankful that it did. It's got such a warm sound, the viola. Like you say, you know, the kind of mm. the, the screechy sound of the violin. And so often players change out of necessity, right? They're performing with friends and, you know, there's a, a few too many violinists and they're like, well, someone should go down to viola. But it's interesting <laughs> that you just wanted to make the switch yourself. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a pretty exciting thing. I, I'm curious right now, um, with whom are you studying? I'm studying with Dan Schultz. He's the principal violist of the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. And I mean, he's almost like a second parent to me. I've, yeah. I've known him since I was very, very young. And yeah, I enjoy our lessons a ton. 
And you're you're currently in grade twelve, right? Yeah, I'm just finishing grade twelve. <laughs> well, that's pretty exciting. There's a, there's a yep. lot coming, a lot coming down the pipe. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the other things that I was thinking about too is I, I alluded to that idea of you know changing instruments to to fill out the harmony. Mm-hmm. It also kind of nicely plays into the family band, right? To it have a does. viola there, it works quite nicely. So, with... what can you tell us about the family band? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, my mom's obviously a violinist, and my dad is a pianist, mm-hmm. and my sister plays the cello. And so together we make up a piano quartet. Yeah, perfect qua- yeah. piano quartet. It's it's great. I mean, just now we were playing at a fundraiser and we played a uh, Schumann piano quartet. And I mean, just kind of put it together. It was tons of fun. Uh, well, do you guys play together often? Um, when we have time. I mean, we were pretty busy. But yeah, we've played we played some stuff before. I mean, we've also done Beethoven's uh, Answer the Telephone Quartet. Mm-hmm. Different things. Yeah, take me back to the early days. You know, growing up, obviously music was a part of the family. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you listeners who don't know, I'm speaking with Alexander Moroz. Uh, he is the son of pianist David Moroz and uh, WSO concertmaster and violinist Gwen Hobig. Take, take me back to the early days. What, what was your first musical experience? Do you have a first musical memory, <laughs> or has it just always been there? Uh, well, I mean, personally, it's always been there. But yeah. my parents always tell me about this one instance when I was, I was listening to a concert, and I, it was my very first concert. I had always wanted to go to concerts, and I always begged my parents, <laughs> and I was very young. I think I was three years old. Yeah. And so I can't even remember the piece or the place, but I do remember that it had a very large, I think it was just drum solo right at the beginning. <laughs> and so then there was a huge portion of rest, and in that rest, it was dead silence. But I yelled out, whoa, what was that? And <laughs> it made people... I mean, I guess everyone laughed a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's my first thing I can remember, really. You weren't inspired to pick up the sticks after that, you don't think? <laughs> like, not even not hitting not the pots and pans. Really. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you played for us a little bit of Bach, a, a cello suite on mm-hmm. the viola. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious, like, when I think of viola repertoire, again, the first thing that comes to mind is, is chamber music, mm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there are uh, uh, far fewer viola concertos than violin concertos. And I mean, there are a few that come to mind. Telemann, uh, which was just performed not long ago by the MCO. Max mm-hmm. Mandel was in town right, performing right. it. Uh, it was solid. I was there. Uh, Hofmeister wrote some. Uh, of course, in Berlioz, uh, Rodin, mm-hmm. Italy, viola very prominent. Mm-hmm. What kind of challenges does that kind of lack of, of solo repertoire present to you as a young player? I mean, well, one thing it lacks is that it's really hard to do something kind of different and individual because there are a few staple concertos and yeah. sonatas. Like there's the Walton concerto mm. and the Bartok concerto and like things like the Clark sonata. But Everybody plays those. Mm. Every like, if you want to be a strong violist, you have to play those things. And so, it's kind of difficult to find individual repertoire. And I mean, obviously, one thing, especially for me, that I love is chamber music. Mm. And so, I do take refuge in that a little bit, and I really enjoy playing chamber music a lot. And I mean, it's been easy, as you said, because I've just I've grown up around it. It's kind of easy to adapt. The other exciting thing to me about chamber music is that collaborative aspect, mm. right? Being part of a, a, like a greater whole and just making something together. Um, before I ask you about your solo rep that you're going to be doing this weekend, I want to ask you about National Youth Orchestra. Mm. It was something that you okay. did this past summer. Mm-hmm. What can you tell me about the experience? Oh, man, it was, it was fabulous. I yeah. mean, uh, you go in in the middle of June, and the program is eight weeks long. It's, mm-hmm. it's a five-hour or a five-week um kind of learning process and then you go on a three-week tour and so the five-week thing you're broken up into chamber groups for the first two weeks and then you have three weeks of orchestra rehearsal and I mean I was one of the younger members there I mean the ages is from I think 16 Mm -hmm. to 27 or something yeah Yeah. and so there's a group of minors and we all became such close friends because we didn't really fit in with everyone else (laughs) I mean the ages was pretty grouped it was like there was some people 16 to 18 and then everyone mostly above that was in the ages of 21 to 27 so there was a group of 11 of us and we just the experience was so wonderful because i have never been in a group with that many incredibly talented musicians like the same age as me and so we lived to each with each other for eight weeks and we got a tour canada and it was excellent it, it is one of those um, prestigious things that you get to do as a young player, too. To make it into to National Youth Orchestra, it is a very exciting <laughs> thing. One of the neat uh, or uh, unique aspects this particular year was in celebration of Canada 150, I know that a, a big part of this was a multidisciplinary project, mm-hmm. um, unsilent project. Ah, oh, yes. 
Can you tell me a little bit about that work and not necessarily so much musically what you took away from it? Uh, for those of you listening, the Un Unsilent Project uh, was one that kind of brought together the indigenous creation with classical music processes inspired by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Not necessarily the music that you took away from it, which was very beautiful, but what kind of like social aspects did you take away from it as well? Um, well, it was a wonderful project. Yeah. I we, we got together with some spoken word artists mm -hmm. and we put the program together with them. So that included some orchestral pieces just by itself, like Death and Transfiguration by Strauss, mm -hmm. and then some modern compositions that actually incorporated the spoken word artists themselves. Hmm. And so those were very, very interesting. I mean, we'd be playing and then we'd hear these poets speaking over top of us. And that was an experience. I mean, wow. none of us had ever done anything like that. And they were professional. They had come from like a theater company themselves, and yeah, it was it was wonderful. Yeah, it, it definitely sounded like it, it rolled through the beginning of August, right? We mm -hmm. had the chance uh, here at the station to interview the conductor, which was mm. a, a really cool, cool experience. Uh, so I want to end by asking you, uh, what's on deck for the program this weekend? <laughs> oh, well, this weekend I'm, I'm a little booked. I mean, first of all, there's the Virtuosi com uh, just concert, and yeah. I'm really excited to play in that. I mean, getting featured as a young artist is such an honor. Um, I'm also doing uh, two choir concerts <laughs> with the Philharmonic Choir. Yeah, it's that and time so, of the year. Yeah, it's that time of the year. So that's all in one day, actually. So I have three concerts that day. And then on Saturday, there's also the Winnipeg Youth Orchestra competition, and I will be participating in that as well. So yeah, it's a busy weekend. <laughs> it's a busy weekend. The good kind of busy though. I oh, mean, yeah, you get to make course. music, so I can never complain about yeah, that. Yeah, it's what you live for. <laughs> it absolutely is. Uh, live in the Diamond Lane, you just did a conversation with violist Alexander Moroz, one of the 2017-18 Virtuosi Young Artists. He will be joining or opening this weekend's Virtuosi concert, Artists of Manitoba, featuring Winnipeg soprano Lara Chikevich, pianist Madeline Hildebrand, and the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra String Ensemble. Two chances to catch the show, Saturday, December 9th at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday, December 10th, a matinee at 3. Both performances taking place at the University of Winnipeg's Eckhart Gramate Hall. For more information, head to virtuosi.mb.ca or classic107.com. Alexander, thanks so much for coming by the studio. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you here. 107 Live is Classic 107's intimate concert series, brought to you by Birchwood Jaguar, the art of performance.